people don't have in communism a lot of freedom, uh, it challenges them to pray more. We have a tendency when we hit some struggles to seek God and prayer brings you closer to God and you can experience his power and his presence unlike when you have everything you need, no challenges, you know. At five, there was a pastor from the union and I don't know if I should give his name, wonderful person, for I was his name, excellent, excellent, dedicated, spiritual, godly man. And he preached in our church <clears throat> that Sabbath from Jeremiah 29, 11. And he said that God has a plan for people, but people many times go to God asking God's blessing for their plan instead of seeking God's plan for their life. And he said we should seek God's plan and follow God's plan. And so I, I was five, so I... Uh, I went in the front of the church under the apple tree. I'll never forget big, red, delicious apples, lower uh, branches. And I kneeled down and I said, Lord, what is the plan for my life? I would like to fulfill it. I said, I am only five. I remember this specific. I said, Lord, I am only five. Can you use a child? Do you need me? Can you use me? And then I went to my father. I said, I did pray, but he doesn't talk. <laughs> and my father said, what are you talking about? And my father and the local pastor and the pastor from the union and another elder, the four of them were under an almond tree talking. And I get in between them. I look to my father. I said, he doesn't answer. My father said, what are you talking about? I said, the pastor said that we should see God's plan. I did and he doesn't talk. How does he talk? And my father said to me, God talks to you through his word. I said, give me the Bible, but you don't know how to read it. You are not in school. I said, give me the Bible. Took the Bible, opened it somewhere, put my finger. I said, can you read here for me? And it was Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 5 or 6. It says, don't say I am a child because you will speak for me. Mm. And that got into my memory. God wants me to serve. My father was a man of prayer. When I say a man of prayer, he spent nights in prayer. He built churches. He gave Bible studies. He did evangelism. He brought Bibles for over 20 years. Every week, a load of Bibles, smuggling them into the country from former Yugoslavia. And he would pray again and again that God's work would prosper, would advance in Romania, and people would get Bibles. And I would see him praying. Hmm. And in the morning, if I would go, he was still praying. And I would ask him and talk to him. And he would tell me stories from his prayer, how the police caught him with Bibles and how God protected him. And, and then he would say, and I am praying for you and your sisters and your mother. And I am praying for the church. And again and again, he would say, the more you pray, the more you allow God to work in you, through you. And so many times when I started to wander a little away from the church, I would say, why do you pray so long? He would say, for you. And I would say, I don't need so much prayer. He said, that's the reason I am praying so much. The way I understand, Regardless how hard we work, we should work hard, we should be committed, we should be dedicated 100%. But regardless how good programs, how much we work, unless God would bless, there is no success. Unless the Holy Spirit works, we, we cannot really change anybody. We cannot change ourselves. And so I believe, number one, that by praying more, we make ourselves available to God and not only give him permission because God respects our choices, not only give him permission to work, but we give him we make ourselves available. But number two, the more we pray, the more we know him. So when he gives us a plan, we trust him because usually God's plans are impossible to even understand, moreover to do, like to Noah, build an ark, or to uh, Jeho uh, Joshua, walk around Jericho. Don't, don't plans don't make a lot of sense for the human logic. And so the more we pray, the more we know God, the more we know him, the more we understand him. And to know God, is the greatest blessing. The more we trust him, so when he gives us the plan, we are ready for that plan so God can work. But it's more than that. The more we pray specifically for people, for things, the more we care, and the more God not only he can work for them, but can impress us how to work for them. And so, uh, basically, through continual prayer, we are continually connected. And in John 15, it says, Without me, you, I am the vine, you are the branch. Without me, you can bear no fruit. Without being connected, we can have no results in our power. So that's one of the reasons, function of prayer. So many times people through prayer understand asking things for our personal needs. There is nothing wrong to present our needs. But I think that the more we grow closer to Christ, the more we forget self and start to focus on God, his honor, his glory, his work, and people's salvation and other needs, and we start to forget self. 
And this is, I believe, the function of prayer should not be to acquire things, but rather to know God and serve God and honor God and allow God to use us. And I think that we should we use prayer to, fo to, to focus on God and allow us to use us instead of get blessings from God. We can pray generic prayers or we can pray specific prayers like forgive my sins or be specific. <laughs> Thank you for everything or be specific. Thank you for helping me to catch the train or whatever. When you pray generic for the church, be with my church. That doesn't move anybody. But when you start to pray specific for people, for names, for mothers and children and husbands and health and the elder and the pastor, when you are specific, the more time you invest in them, praying for them, the more you know them, the more you care for them and the more God can work. That's what actually brings not only us close to God, but close to each other. When we invest in each other and care for one another. Yeah. So, so prayer... Because we may have some viewers on the program saying, but you know, God knows everything. We believe it. So why can't I just say to God, dear Lord, thank you for everything you've done today. You know the long list of things that I want <laughs> you to remember. You know, you know them even better than I do. So just remember it, check, and then I'm out of here in terms of prayer. You're saying that prayer not only appeals to, to God, but really helps to change us so that we are more receptive to what God is saying. Now that's something I think that a lot of people really need to think about even more. And how can then people pray for longer than two minutes? You, you run out of things and then, I know you pray a lot. How do you pray longer than two and a half minutes? And so, as I mentioned before, not that people have to start with two hours. Uh, people need to start with whatever, 15 minutes. But the more they pray, the more they fall in love with prayer and becomes life. And then the more they can pray, so they increase to half an hour to one hour and so on in time. But when people pray generic, that prayer is short. And we don't care a lot. It's like a duty. We don't even think what we pray become it becomes like poetry, like routine. But when we pray specific, it takes time. But when we pray, we need to remember prayer is a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So if we not only talk, but take time to think and to study together, prayer and study, uh, as it says in inspired books, that prayer and study should never be separated. They go together in six, six testimonies, actually. says, When you take time to study and to think, to digest it, it gives God an opportunity to talk back and it becomes a dialogue. And that takes time to increase. And my father used to say, when you pray for you, the more you focus on your problems, it seems the more you struggle. But when you put God first and you worry about God, he's going to take care of you in the best way, better than you imagine. And he would tell me, people in the Bible could not have a story, but they have a story because they focused on God and gave up self. And my father would say, whenever you want to have a story, you need to give up self, sacrifice self, or put God first. And so I was in the army and I was in a special unit that was called genius. Not that I was a genius, but the soldiers in that unit were supposed to be trained in any type of weapons to go where the army could not go and to do things that the others could not do. And we were taught to use any type of weapons and bombs and basically like special unit. And they came to me and they said, we learned that you are an Adventist and we learned that you don't work on Saturdays. We are communists. In this country, there is no God. You need to understand country comes first. You need to give up God. I said, listen, I love my country and I am ready to die for my country. But God comes first and then country. They said, no, country comes first. I said, well, you do what you want. But I told you for me, God comes first. They said, we are going to teach you that country comes first. We are going to teach you to give up your God. We are going to put you in, we are going to make your life miserable. And the guy said, I'm going to give you so much work. Well, he gave me more work and more work and I did it all. And then the others came to me and they would give me work and say, can you do this? Because we, we noticed that you do quality. Can you? And I would pray before every job and ask God to help me do it for him. Not to the point that the work is good, but to the point that it would witness for God's presence in us. People would know that God is with us, you know. And so I did some work that they gave me. But then he called me on a Sabbath and he said, I want you to dig a hole. I know it's your Sabbath and I want to teach you that Sabbath has no value. I want you to put this first before God. I said, I cannot dig a hole. It's Sabbath. I, you ask me this, whatever day, I would do it. 
And I said, if it's an emergency, if your life is in danger, I would do it on Sabbath, but there is no emergency. I'm not going to dig a hole. He said, imagine the enemy is attacking you and you need to hide, dig a hole. I said, well, imagine that I dug a hole because there is no enemy. <laughs> and, and he says, you disregard my authority. I am your lieutenant. And he called all soldiers from our unit. It was 51 soldiers in our unit. Not the whole garrison, but our unit. And he said, when you disregard me, it's two years prison. But if you disregard me in front of the others, then it's 14 years prison. I'm going to give you 14 years to the toughest prison in Romania. And he named it. He told me, and I knew, everybody knew in the country, that was the prison that many political people would go there or religious people, and many of them would not come back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you 14 years to the toughest prison. I'm going to teach you to give up your God. And even there, if you don't give God, give up God, we are mm -hmm. going to double your sentence. And he said in front of the soldiers, dig a hole. I said, I'm sorry, I cannot do it. If it was an emergency, I would do it. But this is no emergency. You just want me to give up God. Yes, and you'll do it. I said, I'm sorry. He got angry. He turned red. He started to curse God. And he said, I'm going to show you that no God in the universe can defend you from me. And he left and he called all the officers of the whole garrison. And they had an emergency meeting. And he proposed 14 years prison in the toughest prison of the country. In that time, I went to the warehouse. I was responsible for the warehouse. I locked myself inside. And I, I was tempted to pray, Lord, please save my freedom and my life. And what my father said came in my mind. And I said, Lord, I would love to pray for my freedom. But you are more important than me. If Joseph would have prayed for his freedom, you could have never fulfilled your plan for Joseph. If Daniel would have prayed that he doesn't go a slave in Babylon, you could have never worked. So you know better than me. So I'm going to say, do whatever you want, but whatever you do, if my freedom would serve you and help these people to know you, these communist people, and to be saved, let me be free. But if not, if my prison would serve you and would save people there, Jesus would die for them, I'm willing to go to prison. Do whatever would honor you and show them that there is a God in heaven. And as soon as I gave God permission, though it was pretty heavy prayer, you know, for some reason, I had peace and I started to sing a, a song that in Romanian says, the one who trusts in the Lord has peace always. As I started to sing, somebody knocked in the door. It was a sergeant, short guy, Marian was his name. He said, Pavel, I want you to be honest. I said, okay. Do you know General so-and-so? And he said the name. He was the general of the fourth army of Romania. Romania had four armies and each army had a general. And he was a tough person. Even officers were afraid of him. Do you know him? I said, nope. You know, he comes once in a while to inspect and when he would announce, we prepare everything because if he gets angry, we lose our jobs. But once in a while, once a year, he doesn't announce. It would be a, a remote visit. Nobody knows to surprise us, see if we are ready for war, if everything is ready. He showed up during the meeting. And he said, I came without announcing and I inspected the unit. Last time I came, there were broken windows. Right now they are all replaced. You told me you don't have a budget, you don't have the money. Who replaced the window? And they said, well, Pavel did. He knows how to cut glass. And he replaced all the windows labor free. Amen. And he said, wonderful. And the driveway was broken. Who fixed the driveway? You have no money. He, well, Pavel knew how to fix the driveway. He did it. His father taught him how to work since he was a kid. And how much was it? It's free. And then he said, you replaced the museum, all the exhibition from those old weapons. Who did it? Pavel did it. And then he mentioned four or five other things. Pavel did it. They said, what have you done for this soldier? Last time when I came, all was broken. Did you give him something, a picture with the flag, a trip at home, some, remo some reward, something? No. Okay, why do you have a meeting, an emergency meeting? You want to put somebody in prison. Who? Pavel. Why would you do that? He doesn't work on Saturday. What did you ask him to do? To dig a hole. Does he work if it's an emergency? Yes. Does he go against the country? No. Then why do you go against him? Well, he doesn't work on Saturday. He's an Adventist. This guy, if he's ready to die for his God, he'll be ready to die for the country. Leave him alone. You touch him again. You lose your job. You lose your freedom. You touch him. You touch me. Leave him alone. And then the sergeant said to me, I'm going to do whatever you want for you. You can go to church every Saturday. Just call him and tell him that I am taking care of you. <laughs> After the sergeant left, the lieutenant came and said, we apologize for giving you a hard time. We are going to take good care of you. Just call the general. I said, I don't know him. Who do you know? I said, somebody bigger. You know the president? I said, no, somebody bigger. Who do you know? I said, I know God. They said, are you kidding us? I said, no. And from that day in the army, they never, nobody touched me again. Every Sabbath, they would ask me to actually go to church and pray for them. 
And so I learned um, again and again that when you put God first in prayer and you are willing to follow God's plan, you don't have to worry a lot. And even if you go...